peachy with that, as always. Yeah, I'm way okay with it. Right. Yep. Cool. Well, everybody rise and join the board of saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, please uh, make sure that your cell phones are either on vibrate or silent. And we will now call the regular meeting of the Farmington Central Community Unit School District 265 to order. I need a roll call. Uh, Dutton Blunier. Here. Cully Brewer. Here. Kay Ferrali. Here. Here. Travis Moore. Here. BJ Oldfield. Here. Alex Slack. Here. Ron Zazine. Here. At 6.30... Three, all board members are present with Raleigh being virtual. Thank you very much, sir. We will have acknowledgments and honoring uh, the Farmington Central Junior High acknowledgments. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. We've got uh, six individuals I'd like to just share a little bit about. We've got some superheroes down in the junior high this year. I'd like to start off with our sixth grade students. The first one that I want to talk about is Tyson Marvel. Tyson is a super hard worker, always respectful and dedicated student. His quiet leadership shines amongst his, his classmates. He consistently gives every activity his best. Tyson models the farmer for. He is respectful, responsible, safe, and prepared. We are blessed to have him as a student and classmate. Got to talk with Tyson a little bit. He loves his video games, and he has two favorite superheroes, which are Ghost Rider and Iron Man. I thought this was a pretty good choice. <laughs> uh, our other sixth grade student is Bailey Emmons. Bailey is a responsible, hardworking student. She is always kind and respectful to her teachers and classmates. Bailey is a great leader who is active in student council. She tries her best at every activity. She always comes to class ready to learn with a smile on her face. She is a good friend who lifts up and supports others. She is truly worthy of being student of the month. Bailey's favorite superhero is Wonder Woman. Got a couple of seventh graders here. The first one is Kyle Miller. Kyle went out of his way to help a remote learner who was having difficulty figuring out what to do for class. Kyle offered to meet with the student to help that child navigate different assignments for various classes. Kyle is willing to help others for nothing in return simply because he sees others in need of a friend. Kyle is always very respectful and kind. In school, Kyle is going to be involved in basketball and track. And his favorite superhero is Thor. Uh, Maddie Leto is our other seventh grade student. Uh, Maddie goes above and beyond for all things. She is conscientious about her schoolwork and is dedicated to making this world a better place. She is such a hard worker and always tries her best. Maddie is a leader both in and outside of the classroom. Her respect for others and concern for her fellow classmates is a breath of fresh air. Maddie is also well respected by her peers. She leads by examples and is always on the ball. Maddie is in cross country, student council, band, speech, and is looking forward to Scholastic Bowl. She recently won first in her class section's spooky story contest. And Maddie's favorite superheroes are her parents. Oh, nice. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, that's wonderful. Uh, and then we have a couple of 8th grade students. The first one is Jarrett Fowser. Jarrett cares about doing his best in school. He is always respectful to teachers and peers. Jarrett is very active in sports, playing football for JFL, baseball for the extreme in the summer and the school baseball team, and basketball for the farmers. He will also run track. He is also active in helping raise money for St. Jude. Jarrett's favorite superhero is Iron Man. And the last student that I want to share with you is Sterling Anderson. 
Sterling is an excellent student and a delight to have in class. She is very respectful of the rules and also of her peers and teachers. She is very conscientious of her work and wants to do well. Though quiet, she has a great sense of humor and personality. We enjoy Sterling very much. Sterling is a member of the uh, school student council and is on the cheer team. And her favorite superhero is Spider-Man. So these are the uh, students of the month for the month of October. Thank, Thank you very you much. We appreciate it. Now we'll move on to the uh, Farmington Central High School acknowledgments. We have four individuals to acknowledge tonight, starting with our senior of the month. Riley Reed. Congratulations to Riley Reed, who is selected as the Farmington Central High School's new member senior of the month. Riley is the daughter of Brent and Amanda Reed. She excels academically as she is in the top 10% of her class and is a member of the National Honor Society. Along with her studies, Riley is involved in various extracurricular activities, including golf, competitive cheerleading, harvest team, musical theater, and Spanish club. In addition to her involvement in school, Riley finds time to give back as she volunteers within the community. She donated her time at various nursing homes and the Alzheimer's home in Peoria to help brighten the day, days of residents. She has also collected food for the Farmington Food Pantry and entertained children at Wildlife Scary Park. She is currently undecided on her college she will attend, but she will major in accounting or finance. Good luck, Riley. Yes. <laughs> She's here tonight, probably for different reasons, and I'm still going to embarrass her and ask that Reese stand. Our junior of the month is Reese Putrick. Congratulations to Reese. She's involved in basketball, prom committee, and a member of the student leadership group. Congratulations. Our sophomore of the month is Sam Grunwald. He is involved in football, basketball, and baseball. Congratulations to Sam. And our freshman of the month is Rylan Barton. He is involved in football, basketball, and he's a member of the student leadership team. So congratulations to Rylan. These are our students of the month. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Moving on, Orange Frog recipients. So several years ago, there was an anonymous committee that was formed that uh, spread the Orange Frog um, theme throughout the district, which is just recognizing people that are, are silent leaders and go above and beyond. And so last year, through the Regional Office of Education, they brought the formal training to Peoria County. And Mr. Lambert and I both participated as a two-day workshop. We were energized. We had all sorts of ideas of what to do to, to boost morale and, and influence the orange frog theme throughout the district and then COVID hit. So we waited till this year and we got a little creative and we, we took some time and so we drafted a form that kind of aligned with the philosophy and we had a tremendous turnout the very first month of fellow colleagues nominating um, other colleagues. So we had a tough decision and so the first month we have chosen two to recognize and the first one was mrs carrie franzoni and she is the secretary at the elementary school and a few of the comments were that were shared was that she's constantly telling kids how great they are and speaks with everyone she's constantly has a smile and is giving everyone compliments and she always has tons of work and puts it aside to make sure everybody feels welcome and she's bright and cheery and she has great treats that she leaves for people as well. So that's what I like as well. Yeah. And then the other one is Angela Barth, and she's the life skills teacher at the high school. And she, uh, some of the very complimentary comments that were made about her classroom was how she has all the students, she has many students that are remote learners or are remote for periods of time, and she's able to connect all the students and make them all feel part of the classroom, whether they're physically there, and she has them laughing and participating, whether they're in person, regardless of what their, uh, their verbal skills are, everybody's welcome and learning in her classroom. And she increases staff morale by talking with all the student facilitators and making them feel a part of the learning community in her classroom as well. It was super special. We took them a little frog and got their picture. And we have them formally recognized over there. 
So each month you'll be able to look up and see their picture and see the little com comments up there. And thank you, Mr. Lambert, for your assistance on the project. And most importantly, thank you to Angela Barth and Carrie Franzoni for spreading the orange frog philosophy. Thank you both for uh, getting into that. Strategic Planning Committee. We had uh, quite a few members of the, com the uh, community get together, and looks like Kelly Brewer and Mr. Lambert were attending. And would you like to give us an update? It was a very, very positive group of people. Um, everybody came and gave a Friday and a Saturday to sit down and really kind of tackle where we wanted to see the, the district go, what things we thought were our challenges, where we thought our strengths were. Um, got, you know, some really good discussion on what we thought was a really good motto for the school. Wonderful. Um, had some great discussions on basically just what our long-term long goals for where we seem to see growth in the school were, and um, it was it was definitely a really positive day. I think everybody was the group of people we had there worked really hard and communicated well. And I think when we came out of it, everybody felt really, really good about the direction that we could see the district heading. Hopefully, wonderful. Um, kind of like to mention that. Mr. Larry Ohm was part of that group, and he gave his time to be there. He was a big help in all of it, and we sure will miss him as a community since he's been a huge part to this school. Yes. Um, I don't know, Ryan, can you? Um, it was really nice to have um, community members, administration, and parish was there. Uh, and it led by uh, Mr. Burkett, I thought it was very well organized and planned. Um, there was a lot of compliments to many things that we do at this school in terms of extracurriculars, basketball that we have here at theater, those sort of things. Um, and it was good to get an outside uh, looking in sort of perspective, and I think that's, that was really worthwhile uh, in doing that. The mission statement that we came up with as a group, uh, the belief statements, our strategies coming forward, like Kelly said, I think are, are great ways for our district to go. And it was a, a collaborative effort. It wasn't just one person, one group saying that. It's everyone contributing. Not to put you on the spot, Abby, Abby, but you were a part of the committee as well, so, and I see that you're here, so if you would like to offer up any other comments. Uh, sure, okay. Um, I felt that it was nice to be heard and actually interact with those in the community and not just the parents that we see typically, but people that we don't normally get to talk with. And like both of them said, I felt it was very productive. I felt very confident afterwards. Um, that our district was going in the direction that was the most positive. And I'm looking very much forward to what can happen from that. Just to add to that, uh, so the plan on the page that you see before you, so the strategic planning has the belief statements, and then you have the mission statement, and then the strategic statements is what the work ahead is going to be. So this is, uh, the committee's been looking at it for uh, about three weeks now, and, and they're still comfortable with it, um, but they're anxious to kind of take the next step, and what's important now is for you guys as a board to take some time and make sure that you're comfortable with it, ask questions, because once it's formally adopted next month at the December, that's gonna kind of guide our work as we move forward for multiple years. So this strategic planning committee is gonna be a touchstone with, with these strategic statements. They may not be specifically involved with the subcommittees, they may be, but they'll always be a touchstone with the work ahead, but this is like long range. So it's going to take multiple, multiple months before you actually see the plans with goals and, and benchmarks. So don't, don't expect anything right away because we want to make sure that this is a long-term plan. So you, it could be by summer that you, you, when you start seeing a timeline, but that will gar, gar, guide our work for multiple years. So make sure you're good with those uh, strategic statements in the areas that we're going to be working on. 
we don't have a copy of the paper. It's in our it's board in our fold. It's on, yeah. It's on it's, our it's on our laptops, yeah. Yes, but saying, just in case people are trying to find that. Yeah, so, I wasn't here. I was like, oh, I did I've it never too. seen it, but I wasn't here. And then I saw everybody else leafing too, so I just wanted to mention okay. it's not on there, but it does have all of that information. Yeah, say, on I, I read so, it. I read it Saturday. So, all right. Thank you. Uh, I definitely appreciate you guys uh, volunteering your time to to do that. Uh, I know that was quite a long process, and I appreciate it myself. Just volunteering your time and, and doing it. Thank you very much. Consent agenda. The consent agenda items one through six are included in the consent agenda. The purpose of the consent agenda is to preserve time on routine items. I will need a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. second. Slack had the motion. motion. Brewer had the second. And it appears to be at 647. Roll call vote, please. Brewer? Yes. Raleigh? Yes. Marr? Yes. Oldfield? Yes. Slack? Yes. Sassine? Yes. Lanier? Yes. Okay. The motion passes 7 to 0 for the consent agenda. Thank you, sir. Request for public hearing. Uh, meeting protocol requires the board uh, agenda item proposal from the public to be requested a minimum of five days prior to the meeting. However, this does not prohibit individuals from addressing the board publicly within the request for public hearing agenda time frame. Do you have any pre-scheduled? Uh, no. No. Is there anybody that would like to speak? Oh. You have one signed up. Do we have one signed up? Yep. I'm out of it. Hello. Hello. Um, I'm Emma Evans, and I'm here representing the girls' basketball team regarding your decision on whether or not we're going to have the season. So I want to start off by thanking you guys for allowing me to speak today because I'm very passionate about this particular subject. And although the current guidelines have made it really difficult for us to prepare for a season that we hope to have, we are really grateful um, for all the opportunities that Mr. Flader and the school have given us to grow, not only in the game of basketball, but as students and future leaders. Over the past three months, the school as a whole has successfully organized many extracurricular activities with no safety issues. Moving forward, I have complete trust that our coaches and administrators will continue to keep us safe. Regardless of what procedures are implemented, I feel as though I can speak for our whole team when I say that we are willing to do whatever it takes for the opportunity to play this season. When I think of basketball, not only do I think of playing a sport that I and many others love, with people that I care about and can count on, but I also think about how much this will positively impact our overall health and well-being at a time like this. Personally, I've had my share of struggles since March, socially and emotionally, but getting to come back to school and being able to participate in activities has brought me a sense of hope and a level of comfort. With the winter months coming, seasonal depression has already begun to run its course among our students, and I believe that now more than ever, we need to continue to provide extracurricular activities and opportunities for our students for the sake of their mental health. Um, with the rescheduling of seasons that have been happening all year, I understand that it has been somewhat difficult to have extracurricular activities, but I also have personally seen firsthand how positive each and every one of these have impacted my life, my team's life, and the student body as a whole. Usually I play volleyball during the fall season, um, but as you know, the only sports we were allowed to play were golf and cross country. And I understood that at the time my mental health was really bad, and I thought that maybe playing golf is what I ended up playing, or any sport for that matter, would help me get back to a little bit of normalcy. Um, but little did I know how drastically playing a sport again would increase my well-being and happiness as much as it did. And I'm um, confident that this would be the same case for many of the students if you guys allow us to have um, a season this year. And from back to school planning to community issues and everything in between, our school has gone above and beyond for me and all of us to even be here today. We have done in-person schooling successfully for 11 weeks with little complications. And the opportunity to play basketball is not just wanted, but needed for me, my teammates, my coaches, and the community as a whole. And it's for these reasons that I hope you will allow us to play this season. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you.
thank you and the basketball team for sending a representative. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Is there any other request for public hearing right now? On the presentations, can I request that uh, Travis Bushu of Bushu and Associates go first? Um, I want to make sure that we had a signal and we have the signal and we, we get him on here okay. because we have Mr. Ballas kind of cornered here. He's not going to go anywhere. So <laughs> let's see. <laughs> let's see if Mr. Bushu is available. Yep, let's do that. Uh, there you are. Mr. Bushu, can you hear us okay? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep, yes. we can all hear you. So, can, can you at least see who, who the, the board and I are here? On your screen? Yes, I can. Uh, I can see you guys. And our sounds working tonight, so the floor is yours, Travis. Take it away. All right. Uh, well, appreciate the opportunity to uh, talk to the board tonight, um, Mr. Chatterton. Did Did you put our client service guy in uh, in the information, or? Yes, it has been shared with them. Yep. Okay. So, uh, just wanted to kind of highlight that. Uh, I can make it as long as you want, or I can make it short and allow for some questions, which, yeah. whichever you guys prefer. Uh, your, your signal will get a little fuzzy about eight minutes and leave about two for questions, but don't mind that. Okay, sounds good. Well, uh, an overview of, of our business. Uh, we are basically an outsourced uh, human resource and risk management company. So we do human resources, risk management, and then also insurance consulting. And on the uh, insurance side, uh, I'll get into that a little bit later, but uh, we do not sell any kind of insurance. Uh, we're completely independent. Uh, we are licensed by the state of Illinois to do uh, insurance consulting, but we are completely independent. Uh, so I'm gonna jump into a little bit of the HR. Um, because our, our program is really kind of a retainer package, uh, which includes these items. Uh, we deal with a lot of uh, various things in human resources and very little in kids. Uh, so all, all of our services are kind of tailored for uh, the back end of the school or the business operation of the school. Uh, so to start with, uh, one of the things that we do and we handle a lot of is unemployment claims. Uh, we uh, have a direct connection with IDS, and we process unemployment claims on a regular basis. Uh, kind of, again, taking that off of somebody that's probably doing that now uh, within the unit office. Uh, so that, that is something that we do a lot of. We also do a lot of uh, employment-related questions uh, when it comes to family medical leave act. Uh, right now, as I'm sure everybody can imagine, we've been uh, very, very busy with FFCRA, which is the Families First Corona Response Act, obviously dealing with COVID and all of the uh, sick leave on the emergency paid sick leave and then the emergency Family Medical Leave Act as well. Uh, so that, that has been uh, very busy. We do write and develop uh, employee handbooks, uh, revise employee handbooks, uh, review employee handbooks. Uh, we don't really compete a lot with press policy service, and I'm sure the district is a member of press. Uh, that's a very good service from IASB. Um, when that uh, comes out, generally that's a, a templated item, and they give you options that the board can select uh, how they want policies written. Uh, we really kind of work in section five of that policy manual. Uh, which is the employment section, kind of dealing with, again, a lot of the Family Medical Leave Act, hiring policies, uh, those kind of things. Those, that's kind of our area of expertise. In addition to that, we also have a lot of programs that we've developed uh, through the years that are very specific to schools. Uh, we've got a volunteer program. Uh, we have a sub-teacher program. So several years ago when the requirements changed on sub-teachers, we developed a program for our clients, also created a handbook uh, that could be given to subs when they come in the door that kind of lays out the expectations of what the school expects, where they're to report, uh, who they're to turn items into, et cetera. Uh, in addition, uh, we also have an independent contractor program that kind of helps mitigate some of the risk uh, of contractors coming into the school, uh, making sure that you've got uniform requirements. 
for the contractors entering the building, uh, what protocols are going to be followed, what insurance is going to be required, those kind of things. Um, and then uh, probably the biggest thing that we do, or one of the biggest things that we do, uh, we call them HR updates. And anything that deals with uh, the business aspect of the school, uh, changing laws, uh, things that come down from a, a, a state board perspective that are going to impact human resources, risk management, or insurance, uh, we do an in, we do a HR update, and we review those or send them out monthly, uh, weekly, whatever the time uh, necessitates with those. But those really are kind of the uh, keeping everybody in the know about what's going, how it's going to impact the district, and then setting a, a course of action on how it's going to impact uh, the district. So, you know, it could be anything from minimum wage changes to minimum teacher salary changes. Um, FFCRA, we've done probably 10 updates on the FFCRA on how it applies, uh, FAQs, uh, and then uh, answering a lot of questions from our clients on a daily basis. Uh, with those things being ongoing. In addition, um, we also have an online training platform that we developed and uh, this kind of helps meet some of the mandated training requirements uh, for school teachers and also non-certified staff. We have a lot of trainings for them as well. Uh, this platform was originally designed uh, by us but we had a, a group of 10 superintendents that actually helped serve as a committee. They kind of told us what they wanted to see from the platform, and then we built the platform out uh, from there. Uh, much like some other platforms that exist, you know, we give uh, access and control to the school. Uh, we have to do certain things to give administrative rights, but then once that's set up, then the school kind of controls the schedule. Uh, the platform, it's got a great book, um, it, it's got a lot of different functions that you can utilize either in a group setting or a small setting, uh, depending on how the school wants to use it. So we try to make that as flexible as possible uh, with, you know, kind of the end goal in mind that obviously the teacher's time is precious and uh, nobody wants to sit through, you know, two or three hours of training. So our longest training uh, right now is probably about 45 minutes. Uh, but all of them meet kind of the requirements and the guidelines for what has to be met and uh, they can get on their way to uh, other things that they uh, want to get to. So in addition to that, um, we do a lot of risk management, um, risk management dealing with facility use, uh, risk management programs, dealing with a lot of different safety questions. Um, those kind of things right now, obviously one of the hot topics and, and I heard a uh, presenter talked before me about basketball. Uh, we've been dealing with a lot of basketball questions, uh, the liability and the risk of playing, not playing, uh, what, what things should be considered. Uh, we help schools kind of evaluate what the risk and the factors are, and then uh, the board and the administration can help make an informed decision uh, from that. And then uh, jumping into the insurance piece, uh, we do health insurance consulting as well as property and casualty insurance consulting. Um, th those two insurances are really a, an apple and an orange. Um, e even though they have insurance in the term, they operate much differently. So on the health insurance though, we do help a lot of districts with uh, the Affordable Care Act compliance, uh, meeting the timelines or making sure, the sure that timelines the timelines are met. met for the Affordable Care Act, uh, the reporting of it, answering a lot of questions from bookkeepers uh, when it comes to the 1095s and uh, applicability of those. And then on the property and casualty front, uh, again, uh, we do bidding uh, there as well. And as I said in, in the very beginning, uh, we are completely independent. Um, so we don't align ourselves with any insurance agents or carriers. We do work with uh, several hundred insurance agents and, and carriers throughout the state. Uh, and our goal has always been to treat everybody in a fair uh, and consistent manner. Obviously with that, you know, in a bidding process, uh, and I don't know if Mr. Chatterton and the board have been through this, but, uh, you know, somebody does have to uh, 
get awarded the bid, and then obviously another party is not going to get the bid. So uh, we take care of writing the specs, uh, doing the analysis, and kind of preparing an analysis for the board. And then uh, we also kind of sit down with the administration and go through uh, risk items as a part of that process to kind of help uh, mitigate risk and, and hopefully become a better uh, risk from an underwriting standpoint. If there's things that aren't being done today that you know maybe should be looked at for the future that uh, could potentially help on rates and those kind of things as well. So uh, with that, we get a lot of questions as far as uh, policy coverages go. Uh, like I mentioned there earlier, the IHSA question, you know, we've been dealing with that for about a week and a half now. Uh, and then also looking at uh, construction contracts, we can kind of help with those as well. If you have uh, pending construction, kind of looking at what the requirements are for the insurance and uh, what the recommendations would be for those. Uh, so that's kind of a, a general overview. Um, we do have a second company uh, which is a, a background screening company and we actually do fingerprinting uh, throughout the state of Illinois and then we also do non-fingerprint background or uh, non-fingerprint background checks for contractors we also do volunteer checks uh, for volunteers coming into the buildings uh, chaperones uh, what, whatever volunteers may be used for uh, we also do that as well uh, those services are uh, outside of what our retainer agreement would be. Uh, the retainer agreement would include the human resources, the risk management, and then also the insurance consulting uh, piece. So that is uh, a very brief overview, and I'll open it up for any questions that any of the board members may have or Mr. Chatterton may have. So building out bid specs on the property and casually, that'd be all included in the retainer? Uh, yes, that, that would be included. Um, now, one, one thing I know uh, uh, Mr. Chatterton had asked about, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Chatterton, I think it was bus or transportation bids. Yeah, we could be going out for uh, transportation bids. And, and you said that you guys don't specialize in that, but you're able to help with that, right? Yeah, uh, we, we don't specialize in it. Now, we do have an RFP, uh, you know, that we've written for that. Um, that is a, a little bit of a different animal when it comes to bids, and uh, you get into special ed routes and extracurricular routes and hourly rates and those kind of things. But we do kind of have a, a guideline that could be followed uh, if, if you so chose, but on the commercial insurance, uh, generally what we do um, for the person that asked that question, you know, we would sit down uh, with administration. We uh, generally get a copy of all your current policies, uh, do a review of those policies, and then also provide recommendations of things that uh, may be looked at uh, if, if you're looking at adding or doing certain things. And then also uh, kind of provide some market guidance in, in regards to hot items that uh, you may or may not have coverage for at, at this particular time that the board can evaluate whether they want or they don't want uh, those options. Any questions? Any other questions? We thank you very much for your time and look forward to doing business with you. Yeah. All right. I appreciate uh, everybody's time and uh, interest. And if you have any further questions, uh, feel free to let me know. Thanks, Travis. Appreciate you joining us tonight. And uh, if it's all right, I'm going to jump off of here and uh, hopefully I don't mess anything up. So. Oh, all right. That'd be great. Thank you. All right. Have a great evening, everybody. Mm -hmm. you say. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Vallis. You're up, sir. The Annette Giannini Fund, uh, this is the third year for this. Um, Annette Giannini started her career in Farmington as a teacher. She went into the Chicagoland area 
and finish out her career. And upon her passing, she left our district a uh, million dollars. We were able to put that in savings and to spend only the interest for basically anything teacher related. You can't go into salary, but, but basically anything else, your, your imagination's open. And uh, so what we've done with it is we've established a committee. It consists of myself, a teacher from each building, and a parent that represents each building. And teachers request through a Google form things that they'd like to, supplies that they would like, things that they would want, the rationale for it. And that committee goes through and kind of selects those things um, and awards the money. This year we were able to fund 18 projects, which was almost all of them, and, uh, and a total of $12,564. Usually I bring those teachers in here, but because of the situation, they made a little selfie video that Adam's gonna I was going to play for us, and you can kind of see what the awards were, and uh, I'll, I'll end it with that. Terrific. Hi, this is Trisha Fields. I would like to thank you for the items that I am getting with the grant money. Um, I am getting the Sphero programming books so that we can, as a seventh grade, learn how to program in an organized way. And I am getting access to the Gizmos lab simulations for the entire year so that we can at least do simulations of activities since we can't do them in person this year. Thank you. Hi, this is Brandy Nolan, the counselor at Farmington Central Junior High School. I just wanted to say thank you so much for approving my request to have some funds to do some different staff morale activities throughout the year. Each month I'll have something different planned, a different theme, and these will be just to keep the staff uplifted and encouraged during this difficult year. Hi, my name is Kim Pillman, and I received a digital uh, unit to support the book Number of the Stars by Lois Lowry. My students and I read this every spring, and it will be a huge help in teaching the themes and concepts that go along um, with this literature unit. I um, want to thank the Giannini family so much um, for their support of education. Thank you. Hi, I'm Julie Springer. I'm a seventh grade English teacher, and I want to say thank you for three interactive online programs that my students can use for grammar and writing. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ryan Wesling with the soon-to-be eSports Club, and I want to say thank you for helping us fund ourselves uh, we received $1,500 that once our eSports club is formed, we will use to purchase our first consoles to compete with. Thank you once again. Hey, I'm Shelby Munger and I teach fifth grade. I want to thank the Giannani family for their continued support um, for the teachers and um, students of this district. I recently um, received a subscription to Book Creator, which allows our students to work together collaboratively, either on campus or on ca off campus. We just recently created a Halloween um, acrostic poem book together. Um, we are looking forward to um, many other um, activities that we're going to do throughout the course of the year. It can be used in all subjects, cross-curricular, and I just want to thank um, the Giannati family again for giving us this opportunity. Hello, my name is Donovan Benson. I'm one of the PE teachers here at Farmington. Uh, I just want to say thank you because with these funds, I will be able to purchase pedometers for our junior high PE students, and they will be able to track their activity throughout the class. Again, thank you so much. Hi, this is Nicole Leto. I want to say thank you so much for the supply fund funding our subscription to Quizlet. My students, both in person and remote, are using it to stay on top of their work and to have fun while doing it. Thanks for thinking of us. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for choosing me as one of the recipients for the Genoni Fund this school year. As a literature teacher, this allows me to secure books so that I can have books in the hands of students. Prior to this year, students had to share books and I had to keep books in the classroom. This way, every single student will have access to a book so that in the event if we need to go remote or whatever happens, every child will have their own copy. I can also then use these books for future classes here at Farmington Central Junior High. Thanks again for choosing me, and you are making a difference in helping our students be readers. 
Hi there, this is the fourth grade teachers. We would like to say thank, thank you for donating money towards our document cameras. They will come in great use with our kids, both in class and remotely. Again, thank, thank you. you. So we are the fifth grade team and we are all so thankful to have received um, Pixton. We will use Pixton all year long as a digital resource for both our in-person and remote learners um, as a way for them to show and tell us what they've learned uh, in all of the different content areas by way of creating comic strips. We would like to personally thank the Janoni family for their kind and generous donation. <coughs> I am Andy Bach. I am a teacher here at Burlington High School. I want to say thank you for the funding for us to create a smart mirror in environmental science. We've used the funding to purchase some acrylic mirrors and Raspberry Pi uh, computer modules. And it should be a wonderful time. Thank you. That was wonderful. That was great. Obviously, a, a wide range of things. And yes. It's unique every year because there's so many different options. and. Really, the, whoever's on the committee, the, especially the parents, kind of take it the way that they see each year. So uh, every year is, is, is new, but it's great for our students. So thank you. Thank you very Do much. Do we get a, have any questions, Mr. Ballas? What's that? Do we get to have any questions? About what? I want to know more <laughs> about this raspberry <laughs> like I, I screen know. that Mr. Box got going on. We're buying it. So. All right, all right. <laughs> that's, what, that's, what, that's great. Well, thank you to all the teachers for uh, applying to that. And, Glad, glad that we have that opportunity. Moving on to action items. Uh, resolution of tentative 2020 tax levy. Uh, the levy process is uh, based upon the estimated increase and decrease of total equalized assets values, EAV, of property in the district. Uh, I'll need a motion and a second to approve the resolution 110920 for the tentative 2020 tax, uh, yeah, tax levy. So moved. Second. Roll call vote, please. Just real quick. Sorry. The motion was made by Brewer and second by Oldfield. Yes, sir. All right. Roll call vote. Ferrali. Yes. Mar. Yes. Oldfield. Yes. Slack. Yes. Zazine. Yes. Lanier. Yes. Brewer. Yes. Motion passes 7 0 at approximately 7 12 p.m. for the tax levy resolution. The FCHS course catalog. The board has been provided the course catalog for the 2021 2022 school year. The timeline for adopt adoption is such that students can begin filling out their course requests in the coming months so that the final course offerings can be completed during the winter. The only note change from the last month to this month's formal uh, acceptance is with the time span used to determine top 10. I need a motion and a second to approve the 2021-2022 FCHS course catalog as, present, as presented. So move. <clears throat> second. All right, just for clarification, Mr. Moore made the motion. Mr. Slack seconded it at uh, 7.14 p.m. Need a roll call, please. Uh, Ferrali. Yes. Marr? Yes. Oldfield? Yes. Slack? Yes. Sazine? Yes. Lanier? Yes. Brewer? Yes. Intergovernment agreement with Hannah City. The village of Hannah City has established a TIF district that mirrors the city of Farmington's arrangement. Uh, is there any questions as of right now about that agreement? Seeing none, need a motion and a second to approve intergovernmental agreement with the village of Hannah City as presented. So moved. Second. Second. Oop. No, you can have it. All right. I have the motion being made by Mr. Zazin and second by Mr. Blunier at 7.15 p.m. Yep. Is there any uh, discussion? Seeing none, 
Roll call vote, please. Mar? Yes. Oldfield? Yes. Slack? Yes. Sazine? Yes. Lanier? Yes. Brewer? Yes. Ferrali? Yes. Motion passes, 7-0. Next up is the IHSA Winter Sports. Uh, everybody's been talking about this. Uh, I would like to discuss a little bit between us before we go too much further. Uh, Mr. Flater, do you have some information for us? Um, well, I, I'd be happy to answer any questions. This is a very difficult decision that you, uh, as a school board, and many, many other school boards across the state of Illinois are considering uh, since the decision a week and a half ago was made to move uh, basketball to a high-risk sport by the IDPH. Um, so because it's, it is such a difficult topic, I'm sure there are a lot of questions that you may have, and, and that's why I'm here tonight, is to try to help answer any questions that you might have. Don't have a jump once. Well. I mean, I'm not sure you have the answer to, I, I'm guessing we need some clarification from our legal representation as to where we're going to fall in liability since the state has said no and the IHSA has said it's in your hands. <coughs> What's that open us up to as far as lawsuits and issues with the virus and spread of do we have many ish answers there or is that something we can ask you to to go get still well i'll start just with our current property casualty our commercial insurance right i've had multiple multiple conversations with uh pat T taphorn with unlin insurance and and he assures me that playing basketball is not exclusionary of our insurance coverages. Now, that's very specific in how I phrase that. That, that means that we're not excluded from coverage, but that doesn't mean that by all means everything is covered. So each situation, if there was uh, something that was insurance coverage worthy, would be handled on an independent basis and you know all the the circumstances that led up to the claim would be taken into account including the procedures and the checkpoints and the actual events of the specific situation i know uh, but maybe we'll take a step back and just talk about how the the protocols and procedures were in place this fall which sure. by all means were knock on wood highly successful and how that would uh, translate to this winter's basketball season. Absolutely. So the IHSA, and they have done this for winter activities as well, but the IHSA has uh, put out a series of guidelines and procedures uh, that they recommend that you follow, and obviously it's highly uh, advisable to follow those, as well as the DCEO has put out different uh, pieces of information. So heading into the fall activities, I reviewed all of those activities, kind of put them into some different categories, and, and took everything and put as much uh, detail in there for us to follow as possible. To start off with, uh, before every practice and before every cross-country meet, if you will, or, or golf match and baseball and softball, we had uh, our students were all and our staff and even umpires uh, were all pre-screened for temperature and, and five different questions that they had to ask if we keep those on file. Um, visiting teams, opponents that would come in, I would send them a list of uh, procedures that they would have to follow. So for cross country, uh, there was different areas that were marked off for team areas. We had different areas marked off for spectators. Because we were outside, we were able to have spectators. Uh, and, and for the most part, in cross country, they had adhered to those areas very well. And uh, really with cross country, which was very commendable, and, uh, for the spectators, almost everybody had a mask on. Uh, wasn't such a case for uh, uh, softball and baseball, but with softball and baseball for junior high, we had areas of, of, uh, that were marked in circles spread out uh, to exercise social distancing, and family units pretty much stayed in those areas, which worked out very, very well. 
and then teams had to be masked up. When they weren't competing in cross country and baseball, they, did, uh, they had to have their mask on if they're in the dugout or if they're in their team camp area. Um, and then, again, we, the coaches, the bus drivers, the uh, starter or the officials all had to go through the pre-screening process. And then we kept that on, on file. And uh, knock on wood, during the fall, everything went very, very well. We were outside for everything in the fall. So in the winter, uh, that's going to be a little bit different. Um, the recommendations that the IHSA has put forth, uh, no spectators. You can only have 50 people in the, in the gym at a time. Um, we have in the summer the NFHS, which is kind of the governing body of all uh, high school athletics in, uh, in the country, uh, offered uh, Pixelot cameras, of which we're going to have one in the gym and one outside in the, um, the spring for football. That's going to allow us, and we do it anyway because we are an NFHS school. Uh, we live stream all of our games. Uh, not all of our games, but we've had the ability to live stream basketball games, uh, wrestling, a variety of different activities uh, in the gym. And we will do that again. So uh, families and parents and, and spectators are able to, to view the game. Um, but again, then there's a uh, Teams that come in, they have to pre-screen. Uh, if it's a basketball, with a basketball game, JV game goes on. Uh, varsity team will be, will probably put them in the junior high gym. We're kind of working on some of those details right now, uh, but there's a lot of those types of things that we did in the fall that are a little bit more. Uh, uh, we have to pay a little bit closer attention to because we're inside in the, in the for the winter, and so those, those are some of the guidelines that we have uh, preliminarily put together. Uh, in to be in compliance with the ID, uh, IHSA and, and even some of the D, DCEO uh, regulations. I had one more question. I had been kind of looking at that original document that the IHSA put out about what would be allowed with medium risk sports. Mm -hmm. Now, did I get it wrong? Or it looked like they weren't allowing actual games, but now they are, or has... I, has that changed? So what has happened, uh, close to two weeks ago, uh, IDPH came out and they changed right. the, the, the risk levels for different activities. Medium risk sports, they can uh, scrimmage, but just with themselves. They cannot have opponents. They can't have actual contests. You have to be a low risk sport in order to be able to do that or be at a different level for medium risk sports. So they didn't change that. It's still only going to be. No, they did. They 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 moved basketball from a medium risk to a high risk. Well, sport. I know that, but the medium risk says there's no actual competition. Correct. That hasn't changed. Correct. So this, if we have a season in Farmington, it's still. How's that going to work? You won't be playing against other schools then, correct? Uh, well, that that's kind of what we're talking about here, and, and how we want to proceed. Um, so the IHSA came out and said. You know, we feel that we can operate um, at, a, at a rate where we can allow or we can uh, approve uh, the ability to have contests with other schools. You know, schools uh, do a tremendous job in, in mitigating and in, in doing all the different things that we have to to try to keep our kids safe. Uh, and we think that we can, we can perform that same level uh, to where we can host contests. That essentially is the, uh, was the, the, the position of the IHSA. So they've yes. changed their position on yes. how they feel medium risk should be played. Because their documentation says one thing and what they came out with two, a week and a half ago says another. Yeah, the, I, the real documentation in terms of the risk levels comes from IDPH. Not that IDPH. And um, IHSA follows those, but the IHSA has indicated that, you know, we think we can play basketball games. You know, and okay. so we encourage that. Very good. Can, can, if we start, when, go ahead, Kay. Okay, if we start playing and our cases within the school start going up, who makes the decision whether we're going to cool it for a while or if we're going to keep playing? What what constitutes that decision? That's a really good question. Obviously, I would be in consultation with Dr. Chad and every step of the way. Uh, what metric or what level uh, would we make that decision on? I, 
I don't know that I would be able to provide that answer right now, but obviously my consultation would be with Dr. Chatter, but that's a great question. Yeah. Well, I know a lot of the professional sports, they're like, uh, we've got too many cases, we're, we're not going to play for a while. That, and that, I just wonder, what would our be, what would guide us to make that decision? Well, the same ones that guide us on a very, very frequent basis around here, just about school in and of itself. Uh, we stay in consultation with, with the local health departments, primarily Peoria County, because that's, you know, the, our governing health department. But it, that's not excluding of Fulton County or Knox County, because we have students coming from all three counties and we have staff members in all three counties uh, just our actual staffing and our own assessment of what what we're looking at uh, I, can, I can tell you today I was looking at positive cases versus direct contacts versus symptoms today so you, you have to look at those factors and quite honestly we'd be more inclined to err on the side of caution with an extracurricular and not play externally than what we do as far as offering the, the education. And I, and I think everybody would understand that. So it, it'd be a little bit more cautious, cautious of a, an approach, but I, 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 there isn't any set matrix to answer your question very directly. Well, when they talk about practices and stuff, they seem very aligned in that and keeping the kids apart in that. I also have a concern about the children, the students bringing their own masks. I would prefer that the school provide the mask so that we know that everybody has a quality mask and the best protection that they can have. And I know that's expensive, but maybe we could get people in the community to donate to help provide for these masks because not everyone can afford, you know, high quality masks. Uh, you know, it, it, Kid, I'd heard that comment. I gave considerable thought to it and I I don't disagree but I see myself you know sometimes you'll see me walk with a nice cute little purple band that's pulling it off my ears and today I'm modeling a new one that has a different tie strap to it I think there also has to be a comfort level on the part of the person that's wearing it so that they can properly affix it to to their body so that they can be safe as well so I I think that I don't disagree that we, we care about the quality of the mask, but I, I also think that there should be some personal ownership that it fits right and there's a comfort level with it, like, especially when you think of an activity like basketball, uh, you know, that they it has I to stay on. I think you do things to make sure that they fit okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, you can get by things to attach to them to make them fit okay, that people can do that, and they are doing that. Yeah. But I'm just concerned that we're not going to have some mask the same as the other. Because some people I know wear mask and they're single fly. And then other people wear double mask. And yeah. I, I just feel like when we're playing other teams in that, I want to make sure that our players would be protected the best they could be. Yeah, very good point. I guess uh, my feelings, uh, and it's been this whole this whole fall is that uh, these kids are being uh, I don't know the correct word for it, being robbed for lack of a better word of their high school careers there's certain things that they're not able to do and I've talked to a lot of community members and a lot of people go back to their high school career and talk about the fun times they had and these kids are getting robbed of it and that's the best word I can use and I would like them to have every opportunity that I ever had and more, and some of them do in the previous years, have more opportunity to have those enjoyable times at this high school and in this school district. Um, I, I, would, I would like to push forward with, with the sports and the extracurricular activities, whatever they may be, um, but I think that as a school district and as quote unquote business aspect of it, we got to look into the the insurance aspect of it, the legal aspect of it. Um, and another big one that's on my mind is how many other schools around the area are going to be doing this? Uh, how many insurance companies are telling them flat out, no, you have no coverage, you cannot do this? Uh, I think it's something that we need to have the administration look into to figure out if it's even a possibility. Because we can say, yeah, let's go ahead, let's have a season. 
but everybody else in our conference says no, and everybody within two hours of us says no, they're not doing it. It's pointless for us. And, and, and Mr. Oldfield, those are that's a very good point. The IHSA on Friday, uh, Craig Anderson sent out a survey to all participating schools. And, and I will tell you that every time that I have communicated with Mr. Anderson, who is the executive director of the IHSA, uh, you know, for a guy in his position, and, you know, I'm just a little old AD in West Central Illinois, he's been more responsive to me than, than, than a lot of people I've had to work with. And I really appreciate Mr. Anderson's responsiveness uh, and his attentiveness, obviously, um, as, as uh, significant as this issue is. Um, but on Friday, they sent out a survey to all the, uh, to all the uh, member schools. And in that survey, they asked a lot of those questions. Uh, this is actually the survey that he has sent out. Uh, they're hoping Wednesday to have that, uh, well, they put a deadline on Wednesday to complete that survey. And in that survey, it says, you know, based on the IHSA guidelines, what are you guys planning on doing? Um, do you believe the IHSA Board of Directors should delay the start? There's a series of questions that they've asked um, to seek that, you know, to seek uh, that information, those questions that you're asking right now. One of the other things, too, um, to kind of expand upon your point, is so we do have activities that are going on right now or, or that are going to be going on yeah. basketball is kind of in a in, it's not at a pause but you know they're scheduled to start on on monday but you have competitive cheerleading which uh, is going to go virtual you have scholastic bowl which we're trying to figure that out but after the first of the year uh, they're going to have a season you have speech and, and for us you have speech and winter guard they're going to be going virtual um, so they're going to be, and, and again, competitive cheer is going to be all virtual. So we're going to be able to provide some activities, yeah. not to the degree that we've had uh, yes. in the past, but we are going to be, you know, if we can get our kids some opportunities, whatever those opportunities look like, we're going to try to do it. And yeah. because again, it, it's their experience. And, and, you, and you talk about competitive cheer, and I, I remember when we saw the video of the cheerleaders down at Peoria. Virtual is great. It gives them an opportunity to still do their their activity. I wasn't down there, but I can't imagine having. It looked like there was thirty thousand, but there probably wasn't that many. But there was a lot in that arena, cheering for these cheerleaders and having that experience. It doesn't go in my in my opinion. It doesn't come over as well as doing it in front of everybody. I mean. No, it's, that's, that's, it's, it's not it's, logical. It's, no, and I understand that. I understand, but I, I, I personally want to give the kids as much opportunity to do it as they can. Sure. I mean, and Same. having competitions with other schools is what I what I would like to see. I mean, I'm one of seven, so I'm one seventh of a vote. But right, you know, we try to do some things to replicate those. Just like in the fall when we had the uh, Friday Night Lights, you know, we had yeah. the, the football team was practicing. Uh, the band was uh, was out there performing, and the cheerleaders were out there. The sideline cheers were out there, and we had somewhat of a student section, and we had a, a, a very good crowd. And, and we tried to do all those things that we can. It, it's not an exact replication, uh, but you're given an opportunity, you know, to you know to get the community involved in some way. And I've talked with Coach Pillman. We met today, talk about cheerleading. You know, is there anything that we can do to? It's, you know, we, we can't in terms of the competitions, but there might be some other opportunities to where um, we can get them in front of people or do something. Yeah. I have one more question. As far as if we go against the governor's decision and what the Illinois Board of Health is basically saying, what's that going to do to us funding-wise? Does that open us up for him to and for the Illinois Board of Education to kind of look down on the schools that chose to ignore? Do we know, do we have any kind of answers as to what that's going to look like? Well, remember that the school's actual state agencies that we're responsible to are the Illinois Department of Public Health right. and the Illinois State Board of Education. Those are, the, those are the two governing bodies in all of this. And right now the, go, the governor appoints the state superintendent who runs the Illinois State Board of Education, which 
we're accountable to for all of our reports and all of our accountabilities and, and audits and everything like that. And yes, they're the ones that issue us our evidence-based funding, our mandatory categoricals for special ed services, for transportation. Yes, they're the ones that cut all the state funding portions of, of our revenue stream. Um, and the IHSA is a private entity that we align ourselves, like all other high schools in the state of Illinois, to have one aligning group, but, but they're not directly our governing body, so to speak, when it comes to accountability for the state. They have one arm of it when it comes to the extracurricular component of it, but remember, it's, it is extracurricular. It's not our base education for public schools. So it was the IHSA this summer, and this is was working in conjunction with our state agencies, the Illinois Department of Public Health and the Illinois State Board of Education, when they deferred to them. And that's when these ratings of risk were established by those entities that essentially the IHSA deferred to their ratings. Yeah, and, and if I can expand on that a little yeah. bit, National Federation came out with uh, risk levels in, in uh, mid-April or May. And these essentially are, every state has adopted the risk levels uh, that, that uh, the National Federation had come out with uh, in the spring. Um, and then the only alteration to those risk levels that the National Federation has put out uh, was IDPH moving, uh, ba uh, moving basketball from a medium risk to a high risk. But other than that, you're exactly right. They came yeah. out with this. So, so it, 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 it's a tough image for, for us as we sit in Illinois and we look all throughout the country and, and we see our, our youth having the opportunity both through their state agencies and they're representing their schools and their communities and then on the private side, whether it be, you know, with clubs and travel teams and things like that that are going on, it, it, it puts you as a board of education in a, in a, a really, really tough spot. So uh, I'm not going to sit here in a public meeting and, and say, don't worry about it. They'll keep, they'll keep cutting the checks and sending you the money because uh, I, I can't guarantee you that. Um, my... My feeling, and this is a feeling, this isn't anything to do with hard, hard facts, is that it will very much depend on the volume of participation, how the state responds to it. Assuming I understand this right, the, the Department of Health moved basketball from medium to high risk. Correct. Recently. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. What is the data or supporting evidence that they have cited for that move? Can I answer that? Yeah. I know you're Please. grinning underneath that mask. <laughs> yeah, we can't see it. We can't see it, but tell, I'm sure. It? Um, we don't know uh, because the IHSA asked for that uh, data, and IDPH informed the IHSA that they can't share it with them. <laughs> is that something we can ask them? I'm, I'm sure you could ask answer. them, but I bet they're going to give you the same thing that they told the IHSA. Right. We're not a private industry, though. That's true. We can try it. Yeah, see if we can get an answer. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to hear from anybody else what your, what your feelings are towards this before we go too much further. Can I say what I feel about it? Yeah, I'd love to hear okay. that. Because I've asked a lot of questions, yes, but as far as how, I, how I'm looking at this, Right now, I have a son that's playing basketball. He wants a season. I want him to have it. On the flip side, well, I think our school does an amazing job of keeping our athletes safe. I worry a little bit about what the other schools are doing, but I want him to have that experience. I want him to play basketball as a parent and as, I'm also wondering how I tell him I made a decision to ignore the governing body of your school, but I want you to follow the rules of your school. 
So I'm, I'm struggling with that. I really am. I'm scared that we're going to tie teachers' hands in opening up a can of worms where we're, we're saying we want you to follow our rules and there's these consequences if you don't. But, but we're making a choice to say we're not going to follow the Illinois Department of Public Health, whether I agree with them or not. Because as much research as I've done in it, the reason I chose to let my son play is because I know what our square footage is for the gym. I know that if the guidelines are being followed and both all the players are masked up, it's actually a lower risk than sitting in that smaller classroom for the amount of time. But I am concerned about the message we're sending if we say, we don't have to follow those that are in charge of us, but you better follow what we say. And it, 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 it's a concern. I really just don't know how to, I'm wrestling with that. Yes, sir. Okay. Hold on, Ron. I'd love to hear your opinion. Um, Not typically, okay. but I want to hear it. You're on, you're, I agree with what you're saying, but you have a governor who is not, not following his own rules. His child is, he has a choice, and he's given his children a choice. And I guess my, my comments would be, why, why are we not giving our parents the same choice? And he's taking, he, for me, my opinion is he's taking that choice away from us, but he still has that choice. say that, you know, I had an opportunity to coach my son this summer, AAU, the uh, basketball coach, the head coach and I, we, we discussed it, and we decided probably not safe. IHSA wasn't allowing any sports at that time, so why should we? We were the only one in the HOI um, organization to, uh, of that level, 14, 14U, to not play. We chose not to. Everybody else played. And when we look back on that now, we were we kind of kick ourselves for not allowing them to play. Because everybody else went ahead and did, there were no issues. So I would hate for us to go ahead and say, we're not going to have a season, and then look back on it and say, this is what we took away from our seniors. This is what we took away from our athletes. Thank you. You three have been pretty quiet. Kay had something to say. Kay was going to say something. Sorry, Mrs. Frawley. No, I'm just listening. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I'm looking, Googling to see what about Richard's son. It's his daughter. 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 Okay, I'll change that. Thank you. Actually, Jim Madsen had a comment about that on the news the other night. And as far as your issue about the mask, we have our sports. They have sports masks that he has offered um, with Farmington um, logos on it to, for uniform for the team, and they have different, you know, um, obviously the cost is a little bit different, but if you want the, the higher end ones that are more safe, then we can do those too. And I would personally, I'd, I'd probably feel quick to look into getting those and providing those for our players. Start with Orange Alex or yeah. Yeah. I mean, my initial thought on the whole deal is our liability. That was my biggest concern. Yeah. And, you know, that's kind of going to be up in the air. I'm going to say that we're not going to really know that until there's somewhere to happen. But, uh, and then the other thing is are there going to be other teams to play? I mean, we got to know that. And if there is, then I say let's do it. I don't, that's my thing. My initial response standing here right now, that's going to be a challenge um, because there are several schools that indicate they're not. But again, there's a lot of schools across the state, you know, this week, if they have a board meeting, like I know Peoria 150 has a board meeting tonight, um, and there's a variety of other schools that have board meetings this week. These are going to be the same conversations that they're going to have um, at their board meetings. Uh, right now, uh, as it stands, um, that we know for sure who are playing. 
uh, Sherrard High School, Lewiston in our conference, Pure Christian, who we play, they're on our schedule. Sherrard High School is going to play. Uh, those are the only three for sure that I know I've heard several others uh, in the area. Wow. Um, but again, the IHSA, uh, this survey that they're doing of the deadlines uh, Wednesday, yeah. and they're going to review the, the, the data from, that, from those questions, and they're going to have a board meeting, and they're going to make some decisions on, on, you know, on Wednesday, I, I, is my understanding. I myself, I'm for letting them play, and you know, I was, you know, really unaware until you actually told me more about the rules that IHSA came out with, like the no spectators. Because I was saying, yeah, because I've seen lots of letters from different people. Well, have have the spectators sign release of no, you know, waivers? I'm like, no, no spectators. Mm -hmm. They can watch it on Zoom. Just like everybody else. Now it does take effect, take away some of the effect of the of the kids, but that's not what we're doing this for. We're doing it for the kids. We're letting the kids play. It's their it's their turn to play. It's not for the spectators. Spectators, you can watch it from home. You know, uh, you know, and since we're going to have it, and the rule of the fifty in the gym and keeping them separated and everything else, I. I, I don't see any problem with it. I myself. I have no issues with it either, I guess. I mean, to be honest, I've been running all over the country all summer and fall playing softball, so um, and I, I guess I'll go on record to say I don't agree with uh, our governor and what he's doing, so you know, I'm, I'm for letting them play. So. But it is it would be interesting to see how many, you know, three schools. If it's yeah. just the three other schools, that's going to be a short season, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But three schools is three schools. I, I, I mean, I'll be honest with you. Well, okay. So, so they play three schools. So what? That's kind of where I was at the you know? at the more of the uh, let's wait a short amount of time next time we can meet and let the administration get some information for us, the legal information, the insurance information. Let's share that up. Uh, what got brought up tonight, the cost, the masks, and let's see what, hopefully there's some other schools around our area or even in the state that are going to say, hey, you know what, we're, we're kind of interested in it. Hopefully this review will come out pretty quick and we can make a decision relatively quickly uh, and table this for just a little, a little while, not very long. Um, and the next time we can meet Dr. Are you, Chatterton and... Are you saying we can call it? Probably call a special meeting in a couple of weeks or a we, week or what or what? We always have that option, don't we, Dr. Chatterton? Yes. That's what I was kind of thinking in the back of my mind. I moved to participate in IHSA basketball season beginning November 16th, 2020. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion a second to participate in the IHSA basketball season beginning November 16th, 2020. Any discussion right now for it? I'd really like some of the questions we had answered personally before I vote, but I would too. Welcome to table. I mean, I would, table. I would move that we table it until so we, just we get some questions we answered. Can withdraw his motion. Because I, I can would withdraw my second, and then we can do that. But otherwise, we have to wait. Otherwise, you get another motion on the floor. You already got a motion on the floor first. You can move the table, the motion. I say she can go for it. If she wants to move the table, then mm -hmm. somebody seconds that. Okay. I'm moving to table the motion until we have some. I don't want to vote no at this point, and I don't have my questions answered. I'll second the motion to table. You getting all that? Sorry, I apologize. We're going way too fast for your note taking. I apologize. I got it. So we had the motion by Mr. Slack, seconded by Mr. Zine, motion to table by Mrs. Brewer. Is there a time frame where we're going to table this? Uh, well, just give me one no, I'm looking at Kelly because she needs yeah. a motion. 
want to get some answers for some of these. Okay. I mean, uh, point of clarification. The actual yeah. season wouldn't start till when? Uh, first uh, scheduled contest can be no sooner than November 28th? 30th. 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 Um, so just so I have a, the questions that are out there is see if we can get an answer from IDPH or ISBE regarding the rationale for change of rating that was issued two weeks ago. Um, Check with legal counsel for the insurance. I'm assuming the legal counsel because we've checked with the insurance um, and, and we know that it's not exclusionary, which doesn't give us car blanche coverage, but it also does not exclude us from having potential coverage and um, potential teams to be played within a season. Is, that, so is there any other uh, masks? Yeah, masks, masks, which we've heard options. a little bit about those. Was there any other information that was requested? So. No, those were my mind. Okay. It looks like if we can meet the week of the 23rd, that'll still give us time before the 30th deadline. I know it's going to put you in a crunch, and I'm sorry. It's but practice hope. before that, right? Yeah, we start. Technically, it's well. It's been practiced. I say we've been practicing. We've been practicing. No. No, it starts. Season no. don't start till the sixteenth. They can't practice till the sixteenth. Okay. okay, sorry. Open gyms. Well, yeah, open gyms. Yeah. We okay. have contact days for the uh, for September and October, uh, which, at that time, they were lay up. They're allowed to have you know scrimmages and get up and down the floor. Okay. Uh, spe uh, specifically for basketball, um, and then after that contact days towards the end of it, that's when the uh, move for to a high risk so, sport. So they can have practice. Um, it's going to look a little bit different, but they can have practice until we have made a decision. Okay. Okay. But at least the 16th, a week from tonight, they can start. Still practice. Yes, practice. Okay. 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 So we have a motion and a second to table it. We'll need a roll call for that, correct? Is this open oh. for discussion? Yeah. I yes. See. We're we still, still open for discussion. Yeah, we're still open for discussion. Okay. I apologize. I'm just okay, so getting my mind straight. So what, what we're we going to do is table whether they have a basketball season. Is that correct? Which means we're tabling practice because see the season is part of the bas practice is part no. of the yes it is by how you say it's part of the practice it's part of it am I correct coach? It's later. I think what you I mean. I, think I know what you're saying, but I think you're saying you want to table not letting them play other teams. Yes. 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 Okay. Competitions. I just think we need to make sure we're understanding what we're tabling and what we're saying we can we'll let yeah. them do and not do. Yeah, that's right. a good point. Not that we're tabling having practice. So that's they, just a we, point we, of clarification. We, of just saying. until we get the questions answered on some of the rationale why it's changed on a lot of those things, if we can even get that answer. Yeah, not to muddy the waters further. Oh, boy. But your original motion and second that was on the floor was that the IHSA basketball season beginning on November 16th, 2020. So right. then your motion, your second, was to table that physical eye. So at that point, then it defers to the discretion of the activities director to oversee whatever activities occur to stay within the guidelines that they have to work with right now until you make a decision. Mm -hmm. His deferring governing body right now would be probably the IDPH. And so they could put a ball in their hands and have some sort of activities. But what, whether you want to call it a basketball practice, I don't think it would be what I would envision. They're not going to be scrimmaging up and down and things like that. It'd be some semblance of the activity, but I wouldn't exactly call it a practice in preparing for a competition. The differences between open gym and practices is that they can be coach led and coaches can be uh, highly active in, in the activities beginning November 16th. Yes. Prior to that, from now, you know, for this week, that can't, that cannot be the case. That is correct. But on November 16th, coaches can be highly involved in practices, uh, coaching up drills and things of that nature. 
in accordance with what I believe you said was in accordance with IDPH. So moving forward, the intent of your tabling was to table the the decision decision to play for the actual contest, the yes. competition part of the season. How do we have to have a clarification of that for the table? Because the motion was for the season starting the 16th. What's the? I'm, I'm going to suggest on, on the discussion that we that we vote down the tabling. Um, and probably at that point, I would offer an amendment to that original motion. I, I can't do that yeah. until that's been tabled, until that yeah. the tabling either gets... So that would be the correct order operation? Yeah, yep. uh, that would be correct. But I, I, I think tabling it, in my mind, my interpretation of it sends, sends the wrong message. Uh, I've, I've sat here, I've, I've gotten feedback from the community, what we heard tonight. The community is overwhelmingly, in my personal interaction it's unanimous that we move forward yeah most definitely um, so to me tabling this is an incorrect move I, I'm not in support of that um, that being said I, I agree there's some questions that we need to have answers to and I think there's a better way to move forward as a board if we can basically maybe empower our activities director or our administration to maybe make some pursue some elements as to a scene because I, I haven't heard who we're going to play on November 30th. Well, we're scheduled to play Abby and Avon. Um, but we don't know if they're going to play, right? Correct. So in my mind, I, this is just me kind of talking out loud here. I, I would really like a motion that sends a very positive message that Farmington is ready and willing to play under certain metrics. I don't know if we can get to that point, but that's that's my thought. Is that something that's possible? I think it's possible. Anything's possible. Uh, just getting to that point, I don't. Hmm. All right. So it's still on the discussion. So we're still I'd like discussion to call board. the question of the tabling the motion. Well, the tabling uh, was to get rid of I the original. Think, Let's just to, carte blanche it not, and go forward. Not, not to cut you off, but were you calling it to a vote? Is that yes, what? I am. All right. Then it's called to a vote. What you're physically voting on right now is the motion to table the action item of participating in the IHSA basketball season beginning November 16th, 2020. Okay. Oldfield. No. Slack. No. Sazine. No. Lanier. No. Brewer. Yes. Ferrali. Yes. Mar. No. Okay. So at 7.59 p.m., the motion to table set forth by Brewer and seconded by Oldfield failed. Uh, two top five all right so now you go back can i make an amendment to there this we motion go. or can he make an amendment to the motion? can he amend anybody motion? he can amend it anybody he, can amend it okay. anybody can amend i'd it. like to make a suggestion to amend it, to amend his motion to uh we'll start the season as of november the 16th okay, okay. barring no barring no competitions until further information is given to the board And 
and we can call a special meeting two weeks within hopefully two to three within the next two to three weeks i'm that's a suggestion i'm just saying three weeks from tonight would be the first scheduled uh game november november 30th would be two or three weeks from tonight two weeks one two three, no three the again six, the again, 16th money the you don't know how many teams we would play or when we would play them or anything okay. and um, the schedule would be kind of up in the air but that doesn't stop the kids from can, can, practicing and preparing to compete. Can I pause for a second? Yes, yes you can. Is that all part of your amendment? No, I'm just throwing <laughs> stuff out there. Okay, that was a just long a amendment. Suggestion. <laughs> so, so we can talk. Can, about, I, but can you, I? For the actual board like. minute, for the board minutes, okay, can I ahead. ask? What your does what your might. amendment to the motion? Set forth by Mr. Slack and seconded by yourself, state I started off with Sazine amended the motion to start the season with no competitions until further information is provided to the board. Correct. Period, right? Correct. Period. Period. Okay. Period. I got the period. All right. So that's your amendment. Yes. Now I need a second to that amendment, correct? I'll second that. All right. Mr. Brewer. Now is there any discussion on that? Brewer had a second at 8.02 p.m. Okay. Now, I believe discussion is available yes. on the amended action item before you. I'll get a new piece of paper. <laughs> that would, with that amendment, that would allow the athletes to practice starting the 16th per normal as... I guess I'd say normal season, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Simply, if you made no motion at all, and regarding if we're going to play games or not, if you made no motion at all, we could start practice on the 16th. Okay. It said what you're focused on, from what my understanding, standing here, is contests. Yes. That's, that's what we're focusing on, whether we're going to proceed with contests. Because if no motion, if no action is done whatsoever, we can still start practice on the 16th, okay. given the, the guidelines that have been set forth. Yeah. Okay. okay. Does yeah, but the motion on the floor <coughs> enable you or administration to pursue whatever it is that you guys need to do to ensure a Potential season, so potential season at this point. Well, it, it, if it if asked for input by you, Mr. Flater, on filling out the IHSA, sounds like we they we have taken action to play this season. There's just a pause on the actual contest until for until these four questions yeah. are clarified. But in your actual survey. It sounds to me like the Board of Education in Farmington is go. fully interested in playing a basketball season for both the boys and girls at the high school level mm -hmm. because this is an IHSA right now. Mm -hmm. Not saying that the junior high won't follow, but that, that one's not, not before you right now. And that would be part of the pursuing of teams to play. It would be a part of the insurance review for the attorney part of the formal request for feedback from the IDPH regarding the rating for change and the pursuing of mask options. Right, that's that's consistent with the dialogue. Is there Agreed. any objection? Agreement on Agreed. That? Okay. But there's a chance that we won't get a clear cut answer on the insurance deal, right? I mean that's a possibility. You'll get a we're going to pay the attorney bill. You're going to get a feedback on what he thinks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. The one we won't get a for sure answer on my feeling is the idea. No, yeah. That's yeah. just me. Yeah, the idea. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. I, it, there, it, it won't be clear cut just like it wasn't from the insurance right. company because it hasn't been tried yet. You know, there hasn't been any litigation regarding it. Yeah, that's what just, I mean. We're not, we may not get a clear cut answer. It could just be nobody knows so but 
Right. Great. It'll great. probably be. That's what it's probably going to be. If you follow these pre procedures and protocols, you stand a chance of a defensible claim. This is what I. But I'm not putting okay, words in the attorney's. You know, he'll he'll do the review, and you you'll you'll have feedback from legal counsel on it. I'll take the three ring binder to him myself if I need to. But you'll get some sort of feedback, but it won't be clear cut. He's already shared his opinion. Right. Yeah. That's what, kind of what I was yeah. At. yeah. Any other comments or concerns right now? Seeing none, we will need well, just a Just to be clear, we're voting on whether we're going to have a season when we get the answers to these questions. Your, your actual vote, well, yeah, that's the motion right. the second, is to approve the participation in the IHSA basketball season beginning November 16th yep. with no competitions until further information is provided to the board. That is your amendment is to the motion that yes. you're voting on. And I'm going to repeat it just to make sure that everybody... The motion is to participate in the IHSA basketball season beginning November 16th. We actually have to approve the motion. We got to approve the amendment before we approve the motion. That's right. Yeah. Approve the amendment, yeah. which is to start the season with no competitions until further information is provided by the board. So and that was provided by a Zazine. It gives, it gives the board a couple weeks couple, to a, a little bit of time, a, a little bit of time to get the information to make a better educated decision in some minds. So that's that's what it's going towards. So we have to vote again for them to actually play. Correct. True statement. We'll vote for the amendment and then we'll vote for the motion. Well, I mean, how, I mean, I don't know. how long are we going to wait for this answer, these answers? <clears throat> Can we put in there How that quick we'll is it be? do a meeting in two weeks? I kind of yeah, that's what I was kind of looking at. I, I'd like to have either like the 23rd or 24th was in my mind. That'd be literally two weeks from today, the 23rd, so that way we can have a special meeting and hopefully get this going. And that that way gives Mr. Flater a full week this week and a full week next week to get some answers and see if anybody can get him any answers on who's going to play. What insurances are going to let their? Because I'm sure there's some insurance companies out there have already told their schools no. Am I am I inaccurate in that or? I I I have heard that, but quite honestly, I'm concerned with our insurance company and not necessarily anybody else's. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. every every school board that has a high school team is is facing the same situation that you're in and their their own set of variables that they have to wrestle with so okay so the week of the 23rd to revisit this motion yeah okay I was just making sure there's no other. I heard whispering over there. That's so why I was asking. Nope. Is there any other discussion? Okay. So we're ready for roll call. Okay. To the amendment. Correct. Slack. No. No. Sazine. Yes. Lunier. Yes. Brewer. Yes. Ferrali. Yes. Mar. No. Oldfield. Yes. Okay. Motion passes five to two at the eight eleven PM. Now, do we have to go to the... No, you're voting on 
motion. On the regular motion. The regular motion. Okay. Any question? Any discussion on the regular motion? If we vote no to the regular motion, we still have the meeting. Then you're on voting that. against the amendment too, because the amendment is part of that, not okay. part of that motion. So if we vote. Either way, we're saying yes, we're going to have a season. We're just waiting for these Correct. questions if to be answered. Yes, so we can't yes. change our mind no matter what the questions, what the answers are. No. no. If you vote yes, we're ha it's to have a season. If you vote no, it's not to have a season. Well, but you know, until we get these, until, until we, until get, we the get the answers met, and then yeah. we will choose whether to. Per participate in contests the comp, the, uh, right now we're just voting on whether or not we're actually going to start practices basically no because they can like mr flater said we can have right. practices of whether yes well we're, we're just showing the community we're behind it so he can put on a survey that we want to and hopefully that will strike some other schools schools to get them to get them the spurred up to go yeah. but if some of these come these questions come back as we could be putting the school in jeopardy. We can still say no on the 23rd. No. Yeah, at Correct. that point, yes. Perfect. Any other discussion? Mrs. Frawley? No discussion. Roll call, please, sir. Sazine? Yes. Lunier? Yes. Brewer? Yes. Raleigh. Yes. Mar. Yes. Oldfield. Yes. Slack. Yes. Okay. Motion passes seven zero at eight ten. Eight ten p.m. Moving on to discussion items. Code of ethics number eleven. I will model continuous learning and work to ensure good governance by taking advantage of board member development opportunities such as those sponsored by my state and national school board associations and encourage my fellow board members to do the same. Committee reports. Thank you for coming. Curric Curriculum Committee, uh, Mrs. Ferrali and Mrs. Brewer. Did you guys meet October 29th? Were you able to do that? Okay, we said that. Mrs. Yep. Ferrali. Yeah. Um, basically, we just talked about the uh, professional development report and then the, um, we, the benchmarking report, which I think, did everybody get the benchmarking reports? I don't think so. I'm I don't remember sure seeing it. There was discussion on how the benchmarking, there wasn't really that much difference from previous years. So mm. we're doing pretty good right You're now. You're talking about the map test results, correct? I think that just right. went to you and I. I, just, I don't remember Did seeing it. Did you guys it. get? No. I don't okay. remember seeing it. It'd be nice if they could see it because it was a nice, they did a historical one for each group so you could go back and see how their scores had been. And it was um, positive and um, that was basically it. There wasn't, you know, by the time we did that, and I had the feedback from the professional development, which was pretty positive things when the meeting was over. I'm trying to think they talked about the air goals and And they did talk about doing a survey um, for students and parents before winter break. But, uh, that's pretty, that's it for the curriculum. Thank you very much, ma'am. Labor management, uh, Mrs. Rowling, and Mrs. Brewer again, November 4th. Um, that was, we spent a lot, a lot, a lot of time talking about contingency plans if things start getting worse with COVID and what a hybrid model would look like and how the staff felt about a hybrid model. Um, it was definitely not saying we were planning on going to a hybrid model. It was more of a 
trying to get feedback on what the pros and cons to that would be for the staff and how they felt about it and where um, there's a lot of con I, I felt like there was a lot of current concern for just an overall that teachers are overwhelmed right now especially it well, seems sure. like in the lower levels and um, that we need to really recognize as a board how much extra is being put on them right now and how much of a stress and and I for one am extremely appreciative for the amount of time and effort they're putting into that I have a child you know in remote and I know that they've trying to juggle the two has got to be absolutely insane and I just appreciate how they're yeah. really stepping up to the plate um, I think as a board we need to maybe try and come up with some ideas on ways we can really show that we appreciate that this is not just a tough time for parents and students but man these teachers have a crazy amount of stress just trying to keep masks on kids yet and teach at this time so I mean that that was kind of addressed um, yeah. can you think of really anything the majority of the bulk was taken up with the hybrid discussion yeah that was the majority of it about it that's about it okay. that's it thank you very much no other committees have been meeting lately uh, i know the transportation is going to meet this month to discuss some things Strategic planning. I'm going to give this to Mrs. Brewer and Mr. Lambert. No, well, we pretty well talked about that. You don't have anything else that you want. I mean, not not really. Not really. Okay. There was, you know, you can you can look on in the board packet what the mission statement suggestion it was. was. It. I mean, it took a. It, it was there was a lot of collaboration that went into that mission statement on trying to you know oh, make it something I, I like that. It. Something like that worked for our own community like instead of something that just sounded wordy and it's pretty cool. Um, and and there was a lot of time and effort put into the belief statements and you know how the community really looked at what our core beliefs in this area were as far as what the school should you know should be focused on what our beliefs our education should look like and how we should go about it and then I mean it's just it's all kind of in that you know where we went with that during the committee I can't really explain a whole lot more about the session other than like I said it was po it was very positive and there was a lot of wonderful feedback from the community it was it was really good to have some outside perspective I'm so glad that so many people were able to uh, volunteer their time and do it that's absolutely wonderful did you have anything else to add to the strategic? I, we kind of covered. No, I think that sums up. I'm just ready for the next stage, the, the, the strategy part. So right. I think a lot Subcommittees. Of the okay. The 2020-2021 uh, calendar amended uh, second semester. Dr. Chatterton. Uh, next month, you'll, you'll be asked to take action to amend the calendar for the second semester. Within that, you'll see that there's a proposal of a hybrid model. Right now, we're five days a week. Um, we, we get out early, you know, to, to help mitigate. We have a lot of other mitigating uh, factors in place. and. It also gives teachers time to work with the remote students and such. Um, but if we hit that threshold, our only other option is full remote. So the desire is not to be on a hybrid model. And the hybrid model means that you're devoting one day a week to everybody being remote. So in this case, it'd be Wednesday within the calendar. That's for every five day a week. But, but there, so there's three instances like 
Martin Luther King week, President's Day weekend, and Good Friday week, there would be no remote learning days because there would be four days of learning for the whole district. So that gives a pause to help sanitize, to help keep distance, all those factors. On the other four days of learning, at the secondary level, that means 6th grade through 12th grade, they maintain their block scheduling that they're currently in. At the elementary level, it would be a purple day and a gold day. So classrooms, right now remember, the mitigating strategies and engineering design in the elementary is they're bubbled in. So every class is in their bubble in their classroom essentially all day in that classroom and it's push in for the services that come in whether it be the the specials or uh, services that students may be receiving lunch those things are primarily done in the classroom this would divide each class essentially in half so you'd either be on a purple day or a gold day so you'd have two days of in-person learning for those students um, what would decide what day, whether they're on a purple day or a gold day? Number one would be the other children in the household, their siblings. You know, you wouldn't want one child in the household on purple and the other one on gold. So they, that would be the first one. Then the second one would be just balance within the, within the classroom, right? Just a, a general equitable balance. Would be exactly perfect because you may have enough siblings that push it. So you might have 12 on one day and eight on the other. Right, well, and you'd be like, you know, I just have 10 and 10, but it'd be equitable. It wouldn't be a clear-cut divide. That's, this is not the desired plan. I'll repeat, this is not the desired plan. But the realities are that our numbers are increasing. We are in, headed into cold and flu season, and those symptoms that are consistent with cold and flu are exactly the same screen or symptoms that we have for COVID. And on top of it, we have students that are less able, they're less likely to be outside. We've had wonderful weather and we've been outside a ton with fresh air and mass breaks and that, that really makes a difference in the overall. And they're gonna be indoors way, way more in the colder months. So this is a further mitigating strategy. <clears throat> it's not desired, but by talking about it now in November, and we've been talking about it for a couple of weeks, this is just the first time that the board's talking about it and talking about it publicly, is to put it on everybody's radar that, hey, there's another option out there. And this isn't what anybody's desire, and this is, I'm assuming this isn't what the board wants to go to with because clear back in August, or since June, the district has said our desire is first and foremost to provide in-person education opportunities for our students. Everything else works off of that. Work on, well, this works off of that, that it creates some semblance of in-person learning. Um, but we have to prepare families for this so they can start to line up what their child care is so staff can start giving input on what this is gonna look like. That's why we're talking about it in November for a December action to take place next semester. In the calendar, you'll see that it, it that pattern carries you all the way through second semester, all the way to May. I think we'd be getting out the second week of May. You can always go back, let's say, you know, spring hits, weather's looking good, numbers are down. Let's vote to go back to five days a week. Well, by golly, we, you know, we'd amend the calendar again. We'd go back to what we would desire, which is what we have right now. Um, but you have to plan for the most logistic challenging schedule for families. And that's what we have. Uh, with that, we have the e-learning plan that was enacted back in March. We said we'd be re revisiting it. There's gonna be some updates within that. Some examples would be like, the way we do attendance is consistent with how we did it way back in the spring. Uh, missing assignments is consistent with how it was established back in the spring. That's not necessarily how it's being done now. So you want to get that updated language. We've got to get the input from the teachers that are the practitioners of those things. And um, so there's some things to work through before a, a December decision. But we got to get the word out that this is a possibility. 
and stress the fact that this isn't desire. Am I correct in saying this is this is our step to try and avoid having to go full on remote? Yeah. Yeah. The, this is a way to preserve some level of in-person learning. To try and we may end up being full remote anyway. This might not work. But we may not have a choice. But yeah, but this is an option that's available. So it, it is completely up for discussion. Give your input, give your thoughts. My plan after I get your input is turn around and get something out to families and community consistent with what I'm saying right now. So I'll probably record a video tomorrow, push it out to everybody so that they can start planning. This is, you know, this wouldn't take effect till January, but this is a big deal. I mean, personally, I don't want to see us go that direction. While I chose remote for my family, it was because I had a I have a job that I could change my hours and still be there and very, very present with everything they're doing. There's a lot of families in the district that don't have that option, that it's not. I don't want to see us go to a hybrid model at all if we can help it, but I would rather see that because at least those kids that don't necessarily have the support at home, whether it be whatever the circumstances, you know, because of jobs, because of whatever it is, I'd like to see them be in person as much as possible. I'd rather go to a hybrid than go to full-on remote, is my personal opinion. In my opinion, it's a it's a lose 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 situation. No, for sure. Because you've already got a great staff at the Farmington School District who is working their fingers past the bone to take care of all the students, both here and afar, and then to have a whole nother aspect thrown at them that's just going to change everything. I it's. It's a, uh, it's a decision that the teachers and the staff really need to be thinking about hard, and, and I'm looking for a lot of input from them. Well, I'll, I'll give you the input that I've heard so far is they understand why it's on the table, but they have great apprehensions for as it exists. Significant concerns for... The level of time, the one that stands out to me, and I'm not, and I could be inconsistent, but you're talking about when those students are there. You're t the elementary students are, are basically going to two fifths time. So when they're there for those two fifths of in person options, they'll be remote the other day, but their two fifths of the time is going to be very, very instructionally heavy. Meaning it's going to be a heavy, heavy emphasis on your ELA standards and your math standards. And that's going to be the focus. And that's going to be a lot, a tremendous amount of pressure on those teachers in the short little window of time that they're going to have with those students for in person. So uh, the perception that this is going to be an easier schedule couldn't be further from the truth uh, specific to the elementary. The secondary is impacted as well. They're, they're impacted as well because their opportunities for in-person, you know, go down to four-fifths because the other day they're remote. And it's not saying that learning doesn't occur during remote, but our staff is most comfortable, by and large, with in-person learning. That's where their comfort level is. That's their desire. That's where their training is. And they're, they're doing the remote thing. They really are. And, and kudos to them. They're making it work. They're being creative. Um, but th this creates more stress on your staff, not less, by and large. I, c I can't be more blunt about it. There's, there's a whole list, and I kind of look back at Chris, and she'd be more than happy to give some examples, but I think, by and large, to summarize it, this causes more stress for your teaching staff than what you currently have. Right. And which Does, they're probably a hundred percent stress right now anyway. Yeah. How do they right. feel I get, about I get it? Bob's back there. How do they feel about it as far as would they rather have 
a hybrid or us have to go fully remote? Do we have that answer? We're working on what could improve upon the hybrid model. I hope that, well, no, I will have feedback for you on that prior to your decision in December. By and large, while your 6th through 12th grade do not desire to have this, they can accommodate it much, much more easily than your elementary. And when you look at it, that's going to be probably about 60% of your staff versus 40% of your staff. So we, we'll get that information, but it's not going to be a, an overwhelming answer to your specific question of hybrid versus remote. But we'll get feedback for you on it. Okay. This isn't, this isn't desired. Have you looked at like a week on, week off type of hybrid? Like, shed some light on why it's two on one remote, you know, two on two versus like, or are there other hybrid models that you've been looking at or anything? Yeah, you, you, you can cycle those students however you like. Some do two day, you know, like your uh, purple day would be a Monday, Tuesday, and then the gold day would be Thursday, Friday, so you had continuity of back to back. You could have a Monday, Thursday, so you can break up the contact points with the students for the social emotional connectivity with the students. Um, the breaking point of the remote in the middle gives you more consistency with your deep sanitation and removal of, of the students from the building so that you have better chance to, to reduce any sort of you know of a virus being present in the classroom but you could play with what day you put that remote day on you can put that on a Monday or Tuesday you can put it on any day of the week um, you you could cycle kids through a week on a week off however you wanted to do it theoretically although our meal distribution and our our lunch program and breakfast program participation has been drastically down this year. Some of our f food distributions as far as uh, farmer supplement farmers that the FFA sponsors and things like that, you, you, you have a need there that the school is able to meet by doing the remote within this fashion, meaning you could s send your meal programs home with the students knowing that they're going to be gone from school for a period of time rather than having satellite pickup at the school for families. So to his question, you have looked in or have discussed, I shouldn't say looked into, but discussed other options. No, this is, they, I, I'll, I'll own this one. You know, I looked into how other schools are doing it. I talked to other superintendents on what they were doing, and, and, and that's, that's why I selected the, the remote being in the middle of the day as far as the purple and gold which the sequences is I think that that's a little bit more for the actual building level to decide you know whether it's a full week of purple or a full week of gold or something that that'll be a little bit more building specific but oh, okay. as far as the actual calendar of hybrid being one day of remote per week district wide that I put that on the paper okay. um, I put it for the entire semester just as a precautionary measure so people, for pl people's planning purposes with the full intention, first of all, of not enacting it. You can, all, you, know, you can do that for the first week. You can come right back that first board meeting in January and go back to five days a week and you not list, move a, miss a B and return to five days a week as soon as it's you know, safe to do so. so this proposal was out there for people to be prepared for essentially the, the, the biggest amount of change that they would experience. I like the days, the two days a week for the kids because the teachers keep in contact with them and if somebody slacks up and isn't doing the work, the teacher can work with them. Yeah. Or if they don't understand anything, they have contact with the teacher. I like this better. I really do. Any other discussion?
Any other questions I, for Dr. Chatterton? You, you thought bis basketball was big this month. You're, this is going to be a big deal next month. So I, I thankfully this time you have the opportunity to ask questions, request input, uh, whatever you want. Now, let me let me do some homework. So give me work if you need more clarification, more input. What do you need to help make your decision next month? I, I want to know what the teachers want, what they yeah. what they what they really desire, what they what what they want, what they. And I don't mean to put it this way. What they want us to do, what would work best for them to, to try and mitigate the, the the stress and the problems that they've been having this 2020 year calendar year, not just school year. I guess my other question is, what makes us decide to? I mean, if we have to decide to go to this, is it because we're seeing such an increase in cases, or, I mean. This is the step before shutting down all the way, correct? Yes, the, a hybrid is, a, uh, is an option prior to going full remote district wide, full remote district wide. You would still, your desired would still be to maintain five days a week. You have right now certain segments of your population within this campus that are remote, forced by COVID circumstances to be remote. Right. And we just keep on plugging away with our five days a week. Uh, um, this but, would be that we're not able to maintain that anymore. And our alternative is to go district-wide remote. So, is this your um, recommendation for the fall for the winter semester that you would my, rather see this happen, or my recommendation is to have a hybrid model available and families prepared, staff prepared for a hybrid model being enacted. Just in the case. actual days that are on the calendar before you are subject to change. But I think that people work better if they have a visual in front of them. So just like you adopted the calendar in August, knowing that you're going to amend it, I would say you might as well plan on being able to revisit the calendar every month. Right. And you may have to amend it sooner. You know, we, we can go remote at any point. But if we're looking at remote, 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 all right, like, we got to try some hybrid here. You know, let, let's try hybrid for this month. But, but I, I think to set that precedent and that mindset of this is a distinct possibility and that people can backtrack from that, I think so, is the easiest way. Now, if you... If you'd like to see it on a on a different format, because there's no denying what sits before you next month is what what you're seeing right now. Of exactly like I said, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, in person, Wednesday, remote, everybody, every week except for Martin Luther King, presidents, and Good Friday. Done second week of May. That's what that's physically what you're on the calendar saying. But if you'd rather see that hybrid just for January, February, and then you'd like to see it go back to the five days. I, it's it's your it's your calendar for you guys to take action on, and I don't mind presenting it however you want. And you can leave it how you have you. You can take no action next month and stick with what you had adopted in August, which is five days a week. Five days a week. So know that that's an option as well for next month. No action reverts back to what we currently have. So question of clarification, I guess I'd say. So if we don't act on anything next month, we stay with five days a week, Yes. but we have this in our back pocket and a possibility that it could be altered to suit uh, the teachers better, whatever the case may be, whether it's Tuesday, Thursday, or Tuesday, Friday, whatever the days are. But we can still stay with the five days a week through May and then come back and amend it and say, hey, our numbers went up. Rather than going full remote, we can do this. Is that a true statement? Yeah, we can yes. amend the calendar as many times as we want to. Yeah. Okay. You guys take action and it's put in and approved by the regional office of education and it goes to isbe and they approve it okay it it's how 
the board desi desires to communicate and interact with the you know the families of the district mm -hmm. this isn't feelings discussions do you have a recommendation on how I communicate with the families this week I, I feel like I need to communicate with the families that we're considering a hybrid model well just exactly that that we are considering that if there is absolutely no way we can stay safe and be in person five days a week that this would be yeah. an option but an option everybody's gonna ask and I'm sure you're all wondering this now well, what decides when it's enacted right same thing that Kay asked about what decides yep. when you shut basketball down right and that's a that's a very very gray area because it's going to be based on what your health departments are telling you what your numbers are telling you and then how those numbers look and when i say how those numbers are looking like if if, if they're a positive case and a, a direct contact you know you know the direct contacts are down for 14 days you can mark those days off on the calendar no matter what Sometimes they're symptomatic. Well, you don't know what the symptoms are, so you're waiting for a doctor's note. If they get a doctor's note, you know, then, then that supersedes and they can come back. So it, it's a sliding scale. You, you, you'll try to get by knowing that you could have people back sooner, but if you had some hard direct contacts or cases and you know the definitive numbers, because right now it's a, it's a long delay waiting to get test results back. So, uh, really? But in some cases. I think I'm under, it's 26 hours. Wow. Mine took and, 48. And, and that is true sometimes. And I've heard of other people that have waited many, 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 many days. Depends on where you go. Well, in the day, and I mean, I don't know what, yes, I don't know what determines it all, but. Uh, yeah, that's part of it. So the communication from the board to say that this is a slim possibility or just a this possibility? This is an undesired possibility that would be something we would talk about well, in worst case like, scenario. Like sure we focus on that it's an option, but it's not, not a, something not a we, desired option, but it is an option. Not, as, not something we are planning on doing. It is a yeah. in case of emergency type of situation. And you know, but my only apprehension else. with what you're saying is like, I, I feel compelled to let let people know that it, like it will be an action item for the board. It's a discussion item now, and it'll be an action item in December. But if you told me you don't want it to be an action item, I, you can leave it alone and live with what you've got currently. So I, that that's why we're talking about this right now. It's, you you're essentially creating some level of uncertainty and and lack of desire with considering this hybrid model I, I guess is there at least is item. there at least one board member that wants it to be an action item for next month to look at to amend the calendar that would be the determining factor yes there if you go. have no interest in considering the hybrid model, then it makes it real simple. You live with what you got, and no. if you can't go in person, then you go hybrid, and then you go remote, period. And I think we need to do everything we can, especially on younger kids, yeah. to get them in, as was stated earlier, face-to-face -face with their teacher is significant, and if that's if this is the only way or potentially one way of ensuring that versus all remote yeah. it's something we need to do due diligence on. okay I w i'd rather i'd rather see the, the calendar stay the way it is and then have to call a special meeting and devote time to come in to amend it because i would rather i'd rather the teachers have the same routine unless they come up with a, a lot better um, option but have have an option as a second play as a plan B but I, I want the 
parents and the staff to understand, hey, we're, we're trying to go ahead with businesses as it is right now, but we know and, and you know what an option would be if we have to. We have to amend, it, but amend this calendar. But I don't want to go into the second semester going, hey, we're switching. You know what I'm saying? Sure. You know what I'm saying? We're what I'm not doing that. We're just talking about whether we have to. But if you're saying we're amending the calendar, that's changing the second semester. It would be a vote on it. It wouldn't yeah. be saying we are. It's deciding in a month from now what the numbers look like and giving our community the most advance notice to that possibility that we can. Yeah. It's not saying that any of us want to go that way. It's oh, just I, yeah. visiting it in December when we can see a little bit more about where cold and flu and numbers are when it when it's December rather than us just saying we're going to ignore this completely it's not going to happen and then spring it on the community a week before we go to a hybrid and our teachers a week before we decide we need to go to a hybrid the time leading up would be the actual work at the building levels to yeah. divide up how a schedule would look because you your for example your elementary right now your high school P classes are all remote. They don't have PE on, on site. But the elementary, it, it's on site. Well, that may not be in a hybrid model an option, you know, guaranteed that within those two days, because it may not be. So I, that requires some planning. It requires planning to see how many kids are in the household and make sure that you can get them divided up and on the same groups. And you know, it's a considerable amount of work to put together what a possible hybrid, a schedule that you don't even want to have together. Yeah. So it, I guess that's what I'm asking now. If that's not something that you want to even consider, then don't have everybody go through all the trials and tribulations of putting one together if I, you know for sure that you're not interested in that. I, I think that we are wanting to pursue looking into it and getting it planned out just in case we need it. Okay. But I don't want the community looking at it and going, hey, they've changed the schedule. This is where we're going, is, is what I'm saying. I don't want that. Yeah, I, even, I, I, don't will communicate that it, yeah. I will communicate it repeatedly that this is undesired. You just, just know that what will be sitting before you for action next month right. is a hybrid model. Yeah. Unless I hear otherwise. And you could vote it down, no. table it, not don't take action. I mean there's mm -hmm. there's all sorts of options that you have available. I just I don't want to continue down this path of putting what one might look together together. I think if, everybody if wants there's to see no what it look like at least. I mean until we have a plan B. Okay. We'll continue the work on it then. Delegate assembly is customary for the board to give input to our delegate at the November meeting prior uh, to them participating in the delegate assembly. Mr. Zazine will be participating this Saturday in the assembly. If you have any questions or comments for him, please address him. This is a, a, a yearly assembly, typically in November. The, I, the Illinois State Board of Education puts on a convention for training up in Chicago and most of the board usually goes uh, but this year they have canceled it due to restrictions on on gatherings it is typically a great way to continue your education and to experience more than just our school district with other school board members of smaller and larger districts the delegate is a represented from this school district to go up and vote for possible changes to the State Board of Education. So. I'm, I'm just guessing that, Ron, you would like some input from the whole well, board before for, you make... So, so you guys know the, there are 
eight resolutions, and you have them in front of you. What you have in front of you are the arguments for and against. Yeah. And I have seen no other information come up uh, for or against on these uh, since the last uh, meeting. Uh, and there are one. There are three. Uh, I believe there are three reaffirmate reformations reformations on uh, exist as existing positions, and then they're reaffirming their our position on it. That's on. That will be on your basically on your last page of those forms. And then you have uh, new brief statements of equality, which pretty you know they're pretty self-explanatory. Than last, you know the last one. Uh, yeah, is there any questions on the? We'll start even with res resolution number one, the loan program. I can read you the full resolution if that's what you'd like. Uh, it's basically the state of Illinois. It's having the Illinois State Board of Association of School Boards shall request that the state of Illinois establish a low cost loan program for the public school districts. This program will be will allocate local dollars to flow more directly to the students while providing relief to the local taxpayers. You, as you can see, you you see the. Uh, fors and against there okay and the resolution of the committee recommends not to adopt it and most of the school board me most of the school boards that I've that I've heard through the webexes are all against it also I would agree with that okay the other one is the gun storage okay Basically, they're at they're wanting the Board of Education Association of the Board the School Boards shall support and activate a legislation which strengthens the child's gun or child safe gun storage law in the state of Illinois, requiring gun owners to store firearms, whether they are loaded or unloaded, in a secured locked container if the person is under the age of 18 is likely to gain access to the weapon without permission. Uh, you see the fours and against in front of you. Uh, the committee recommends not to adopt it. And biggest reason is, is they're saying, well, cool. you know, we're the school. We're not regulating what people do at home. Right. Okay. Does everybody agree with that? Because how you guys agree is how I'm going to vote. Yes, thank you. Uh, school report card. Illinois, Illinois Association of School Boards shall support legislation that would direct the Illinois State Board of Education to prepare and disclose all available school report card data for current academic year by June the 1st of that year. You see the fours and against in front of you. The uh, resolution of the committee recommends do not a adopt it. Are there any questions? I I personally agree with 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 the against. I do too. Okay, resolution of uh, pre-K religious, <coughs> pre-K pre teacher license licensors. Uh, uh, shall advocate that the legislation mandate the school board of education require pre-service teachers seeking licensors in the area listing it to complete at least one undergraduate level literacy education course solely de dedicated to the specific proven methods of reading instructions before they grant the li licensure it is the in the following areas the individuals must be receiving a passing score in foundation of reading 
of reading exams. Licensure areas should meet the requirements are early childhood education, early childhood special education, elementary education, English language arts, middle, middle age language arts, reading specialists, reading teachers, special education, and speech language pathologists. The resolution committee recommends do not, do not uh, adopt it. A lot of the a lot of the question a lot of the against you'll see of the current teachers training programs are already offered as literacy classes. That's one of the biggest ones. Your guys's your guys's opinion and vote? Sounds good. Okay. Against it. Against? Okay. Teacher okay. shortage. I vote against it. Okay. Teacher shortage. Uh I'm not going to read that. I believe we all have an understanding of the teacher sh shortage, and it's basically to uh, expand the issuance of provisions of the teacher's licenses in all, all curr curricular areas is basically what that is. Uh, and they want to adopt it. Any questions on that? Okay. The last one is e-learning on election day. Okay, you see that you can see that one of the four comments on it, and the and the board or the uh, resolution committee is for this. And basically, that is having uh, e-learning on the election day, and the biggest reason is because there are lots of schools that are shut, you're shutting down because of it, and many school districts have many schools. Instead of shutting down that day, why don't you have e-learning that day? Any questions or comments or how you want me to vote? Or do we, do we follow the committee? I'm okay with following the committee. Hearing none, I'm going to follow the committee with a yes. Okay, local pen, the uh, local control of the pandemic. Okay, you can see the fours and against of that. They agree in adopting it. Okay, to give us to give more local control of it instead of the governor having so much control of it. Basically, is he, he, he's using the uh, regional approaches now. And uh, some of the regional approaches aren't, aren't really working because, you know, you're talking in our, like in our region in particular, you know, we're talking Peoria versus Farmington, you know, which one's worse and you know, you're talking little towns and stuff, having the locals do it. That's what, that's basically what they're getting at. Is there any questions on that? They vote to adopt it. I would say it doesn't go far enough. And well, the regional true. approach should probably be district, school district approach. Right. But in absence of that, I would say it's, I'm more for it than against it. Okay. Uh, resolution 8, you can see uh, it's basically the same, uh, but they're, they're saying don't adopt it because it's not as, you know, the language in the resolution is almost identical to, set the, to number 7. So they say, you know, why, why are we making, having two basically the same resolutions? Okay. Uh, the reformation, uh, ref Reaffirmation of the existing positions. Uh, they all say they approve all, on all of them. Uh, one's a position statement of the renewal of the, of the charters. Okay, these are charter schools. You against that? I take that. Mrs. Frawley? You disagree? I don't. I don't. So you don't want? The Illinois Association of School Boards, I'll read it. The Illinois Association of School Boards shall urge adoption of the legislation to allow 
for participation of your host school districts and charter schools to renew renew the process as a state authorized chartered school they're basically saying can they recharter but can does a local school district have something input in that that's what this affirmation statement yes. is indicating that the local school district will have right. input on charters yes so i agree that good okay. okay so you're saying yes like they like the yes like the recommendation of the committee correct correct okay position 17 uh 117 is the charter schools and at at risk students this would be kind of if I'm not mistaken, this would be kind of like our charter schools of that we have in Wildlife Prairie Park, correct? Uh, more yeah. at-risk schools. Yeah, yes, learning but it, it is operated by a charter, which is an independent, yeah. as opposed to a regional office education. But yes, same concept. So basically, it's saying they want to uh, recharter those also. The at-risk at student. Uh, charter schools and the committee says yes they want to adopt it any questions on that and the last one is a state authorizing charter school funding urges the adoption of the legislation that would create a new method of funding the state authorized charter schools which would not have a negative financial impact on the host district partially in the spirit of evidence-based funding with respect to the state authorized virtual charter schools further limit the withholding of the state funds from the host school district in proportion to per pupil ex uh, expenditure used for the building maintenance classroom supplies transportation safety secure safety and security and other cost uniques unique to brick and mortar schools for all state authorized charter schools required that proof of continuing enrollment and, and attendance be submitted quarterly with appropriate refunds to the host school district upon withdrawal of the students with the chart of the from the chartered school resolution uh, recommends adopt and I would I would personally agree any any questions or any comments toward that okay I will proceed to do this on Saturday for well, about a couple hours. Yep. That's what it usually takes. <laughs> closed session for the purpose of student discipline or personnel. Motion and second to enter into closed session for the purpose of student discipline and personnel. So moved. Second. Give the give the So it was so moved by Zazine. Seconded by Oldfield. At 902 all right this time we start with we start with Zazine yes Lunier yes Brewer yes Crawley yes more yes Oldfield yes slack yes Motion carries. Move in to closed session seven zero.
We ask for a motion and a second to return to open session. So moved. Second. Motion made by Brewer. Second and second by, by Bonaire. And a roll call, please. Bonaire. Yes. Brewer. Yes. Raleigh. We don't have her back. Absent. Mar. Yes. Oldfield. Yes. Slack. Yes. Z. <clears throat> yes. I didn't look at the screen. I thought we had Mrs. Frawley. I apologize. Should we wait for her? I'm assuming she's coming back. You want me to text her? Yeah, ask her. Text her, please, if you would. Thank you. Yes. Oh, so she's in the waiting room. You just got to let her in, I guess. Oh, it does say admit, yeah. Yep, she admit. needs to let in. There we go. Mrs. Raleigh. Hold on. Here she comes. Adam, you got her in there? He's working on it. He's trying to. Don't fall asleep. I can only imagine. Ryan, Ron do last. Yeah, no kidding. He's just checking out the It is pretty. When is the uh, performance again? It was last weekend. <laughs> wow. It's about par for my course. We did just, uh, we did a virtual, yeah. yeah. I was gonna I, I was gonna talk to my wife and my daughter and see if they wanted to watch it and it's about par for my Epic course. Epic fail. Epic. I'm not even going to mention it to him now. <laughs> I did the same thing. I, I was looking at the notes I gave on Monday. Like, oh, crap. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's why I looked, in, but I didn't read the dates. Obviously. There's Kay. She's there. Mrs. <laughs> there she is. Okay, Mrs. Frawley's there. So, I need a motion and a second to approve uh, the volunteers. Eric Higgs, Farmington Central High School basketball. Go back in open session. We already did that. Right. Kent si <laughs> Simons. Simmons. Simmons. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> Simmons, Farmington Central High School cheerleading for as volunteers for the 2020-2021 school year. So moved. Second. Ron Zine, Kelly Brewer, and uh, that clock can't be right. It must be nine. 956. 956. That one says 
It's 9.56. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah, roll call, please. Brewer. Yes. Frawley. Yes. Marr. Yes. Oldfield. Yes. Slack. Yes. Sazine. Yes. Lunier. Yes. Mo passes 7 0. Thank you, sir. Motion is second to approve FMLA leave of Dale Horn from November 22nd or 26th, 2020 to January 6th, 2021. So, so moved. moved. Sazine with the motion. Second. Brewer with the second. Brewer with the second. Roll call, please. 957. Frawley. Yes. Mar. Yes. Oldfield. Yes. Slack. Yes. Sassine. Yes. Lunier. Yes. Brewer. Yes. Motion passes 7-0 at 9.57 p.m. Motion a second to approve Anita Bowsman as Farmington Central High School Scholastic Bowl teacher for 2020-2021 school year. So moved. All second. Second. Sazine with the motion. Oldfield with the second. Roll call, please. Mar. Yes. Oldfield. Yes. Slack. Yes. Sazine. Yes. Lunier. Yeah. Brewer. Yes. Ferrali. Yes. Mar. He said him. Yes. Oh, I right, you. <laughs> you get two votes. You get two today. votes this time, dude. Good job. <laughs> Should have said no that time. <laughs> Passes at 7-0 at 958. Actually passed eight. Motion a second to approve the discretionary leave of Megan Cruza from November 9th, 2020 to January 8th, 2021. So moved. Second. Zine with the motion. Brewer with the second. Roll call, please. Oldfield. Yes. Slack. Yes. Zazine. Yes. Lunier. Yes. Brewer. Yes. Ferrali. Yes. Mar. Yes. <laughs> Motion a second to prove the FFCRA leave request of Ramona Ball as submitted. So moved. Second. <laughs> Brewer with the motion. Marr with the second. Roll call, please. Slack? Yes. Sassine? Yes. Lunier? Yes. Brewer? Yes. Ferrali? Yes. Marr? Yes. Oldfield? Yes. Motion passes 7 0 at 10 p.m. Motion to adjourn. Second. Sazine had the motion. <laughs> Oldfield had the second. Roll call, please. Sazine. Yes. Lunier. Yes. Brewer. Yes. Brawley. Yes. Mar. Yes. Oldfield. Yes. Slack. No. <laughs> <laughs> Next regular meeting Monday, December 14th, 2020 p.m. at 6.30 p.m. at the Farmington Central High School Resort Research Center. No, no.